Hello, everyone, and welcome to our CodeMonkey annual Hour of Code webinar. We're so excited to have you here, whether you're joining us live right now or watching the recording later. Let's go ahead and meet our CodeMonkey team that's going to be leading our time together today. First, my name is Lauren Rata, and I'm one of the customer success managers here at CodeMonkey Studios. I'll be leading most of the content for our webinar this afternoon. Peel, please feel free, though, to connect with me on social media here at, I have Twitter or X now and LinkedIn, um, as well as reach out to me after today if you want to at lauren.r at codemonkey.com for any of your CodeMonkey content needs. And then we have Molly here, and I'm going to go ahead and let her unmute herself and introduce herself. Hi, everyone. My name is Molly, and I'm on the sales team here at CodeMonkey. Today, I will be helping Lauren out with answering questions that come in on the Q&A. So as questions come up, um, feel free to send those through. We will either respond um, in a quick message back to you, um, or if it's a question that may be relevant to everyone else that's joining, we will save those uh, for Lauren to cover. Perfect. Thank you, Molly. And then next we also have here is Livnet, and I'll go ahead and let her unmute and introduce herself as well. Hi, everyone. My name is Livnat. I'm uh, the pedagogy and content developer at CodeMonkey. I'm responsible for creating some of the Hour of Code that Lauren will present today. Uh, and I'll answer any question relating to content or whatever else uh, that you have. Thank you so much, Lynette. So first also, um, Jonathan Shore, our Code Monkey, one of the founders and CEO, he wanted to be here um, today, this afternoon, but for him, it's 10 o'clock at night. Um, so I have a little video instead for him that I'm gonna play for you. Hello, my name is Jonathan Shore, and I'm the founder and CEO here at CodeMonkey Studios. Thank you for joining us today for the Hour of Code webinar for 2023. We hope that you and your students enjoy our free CodeMonkey course offering next week to celebrate the annual Hour of Code. Coding boosts problem-solving skills, improves computational thinking, encourages persistence, teacher creativity, improves confidence and communication skills, as well as help to prepare children for the future. Although many educators provide time for students to code during the celebratory week, it is important that we give our students the opportunity to code year-round as well. We hope that you join us next week to expose your students to our engaging coding courses, as well as consider joining us year-round with a subscription. Happy coding! Oops, sorry. Also, um, well, thank you, Jonathan, even though he's not here right now. Um, he just wanted, like I said, introduce himself, um, as well as tell you a little bit about CodeMonkey and his passion for coding and the importance of coding, and not only next week for Hour of Code, but also, like we said, year-round. Um, at any time, if you want to stay up to date on all the latest information on all things CodeMonkey, be sure to follow us on all of our social media outlets. Um, they're all at CodeMonkeySTU. And we'll share this slide deck with you later um, through the chat, um, as well as also um, later within if you're watching the recording, we'll have this in the description. And you can click on any of these links if you want to directly to take you to Twitter or X, Instagram, Facebook, or LinkedIn. Um, and you can follow us um, there and start tagging us as well. Um, so please do make sure you do that. Like I said, we post daily. So just kind of stay up to date on CodeMonkey and all of our offerings. And um, it's a great idea to follow us there. So let's take a minute and look at our webinar outcomes for today. Um, like Molly mentioned, she'll be and live that as well, kind of manning that Q&A, although we reserve time at the end for Q&A. Please feel free at any time there at the bottom. You have that tool that says Q&A. And you can type in your questions there, and we'll try to answer them as we go. But we do have that designated time at the end. Um, I'm really excited because, yes, we'll talk about the hour of code and the importance of coding. And um, we'll look a little bit at CodeMonkey's journey um, and where we've kind of come and who we are. Um, but we're going to kind of release or share with you our free 
courses, as well as really highlight our new AI as a hoot, which is the AI pose detection. And so I'm really excited about that today to share that with you and how it works. We'll do a couple of the exercises together so you feel comfortable with using it with your students. Um, and then we'll kind of finish up with a little bit of guidance about how to prepare for Hour of Code in your classroom, um, whether it might also be your school, if you're a school leader, or maybe you're a district leader. And so you might need to prepare um, that way as well. So let's look a little bit at what Hour of Code is. I cannot believe, but Hour of Code actually started in December of 2013. So this is now the 11th year for Hour of Code, which is absolutely amazing that we're providing our students this opportunity each year and we have now for 13, 11 years. Um, so what the Hour of Code is, if you're unfamiliar, is that free opportunity that's hosted each year to provide kind of like an introduction to computer science. And it's always done through those fun activities and also Hour of Code has videos for learners and it's at all skill levels because they know that some students get this opportunity just this once a year. Um, some have it all during the year, which is great and it's incorporated. So um, they can kind of get started any way that they need to at just that right level for them. Um, this year's celebration, I think it's unique, even though I've participated many years, because um, yes, we have coding, but also AI is supported because we know AI is our world right now. Um, so that they've incorporated that as well, just like you see that our new course, um, AI is a hoot, is in there as well. Um, but also we have 400 partners this year, 20,000 educators have already signed up, and then also 58,000 volunteers as well. Um, and then also 180 countries are already signed up to participate. And this is a kind of a neat graphic to kind of look and see how many people plan on next week participating in that hour of code. So really cool. So let's look at a little bit more about, we have a promotional video about what the hour of code is I'd like to share with you right now. Um, but also keep in mind that this video is um, on our YouTube channel, um, which can also be found in the description notes of this slide um, so that you can follow us or add us there, our channel on YouTube, and you can show this to your students next week, other teachers, um, anyone in your district that might not know what Hour of Code is to help to explain to them. So let's check out this video. Hey guys, I bet you're wondering where I'm going to. Well, we're all going to this special event, and you can join in too. You know, they say a thousand monkeys with a thousand ears can write the works of Shakespeare. But we're not going to write Shakespeare. We're going to write code. Because every year in December, we get together. It's called Hour of Code. It's a worldwide event where teachers and students in 45 different languages across more than 180 countries come together to learn computer coding. It's a chance to understand how the apps and tech we use every day are made. It's a chance for the next generation of engineers and programmers to get a head start on all the wonderful things that we'll create. I'm talking about you. I know it looks a bit scary at first, but don't worry. You don't even need to know anything about coding yourself, because CodeMonkey has self-guided tutorials for you to choose from. You've got everything you need to make your own games and applications. And don't worry if you don't have your own computer. You can even share equipment to make things together. It's really good for team building. We've got so many cool things to do for all ages. You can create a chatbot. You can create your own physics. You can make games about catching bananas. You can even help my friend Beaver do all sorts of things. And it's all free. And there are short courses and big courses. And there are even bigger challenges if you want. You can do it your way, however long you want, how you want, and even where you want. And you don't even have to be a kid. Even adults can start learning how to cope. Anyone can sign up and be part of the fun. So do it today and get ready for December. Who knows where your adventures will take you? What you do during the Hour of Code is up to you. And there are so many possibilities that I know you'll make something great. It's so easy, even a monkey could do it. Please like this video, share with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching. Like I said, um, this video is great for explaining to other educators, but also you can pull this video up and share this with your students next week if you want. Um, here in just a second, Molly's going to throw the slide deck link in the chat um, so that you can access it. Um, and then also within that slide deck link, um, 
look for our YouTube channel link directly so that you can find this video and use it as well. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. And like they said, um, the Hour of Code is great because all level of learners can use it. It's that great exposure, um, whether you're a computer science teacher and you are using coding every day or you're a classroom teacher and you only use it once a year for Hour of Code. Um, we have resources that I'll show you here in just a minute to help you feel comfortable so that you can get started. See you. Hey guys. So let me take a moment just to tell you about Code Monkey as we have many participants here on um, this webinar, whether you're live or watching later. And some of you are awesome existing customers and you know Code Monkey, you love Code Monkey, but some of you are potential new users here today. And so I want to tell you a little bit about Code Monkey and what kind of sets us aside from some of the other subscriptions out there. Um, so first, we are that leading kids program provided. We provide an engaging online course um, for students to learn coding. Um, what's really neat about us that I think really sets us aside um, is it was designed with schools and teachers in mind because it's easy to use. Um, we have a informative student, teacher, and administrator dashboard so that you can fully see all of our courses, access the resources, monitor your students' progress um, to help, you know, provide next steps for them. And so it's not just a, a website where you assign courses and classes and it's very intentional. Um, and so that students um, are progressing at just the right level and you're pushing them even beyond. Um, it is standards aligned, both with CSTA or Computer Science Teacher Association standards and ISTIA standards as well. Um, and then we also have alignment documents for individual state standards upon request. So if that's something you're interested in, we can provide that as well of how each and every one of our courses align with your individual state standards. Um, also, we are different because we're a full K-8 coding curriculum. So we have that full curriculum that, and actually I say you can use it pre-K as I've used it with preschoolers all the way into high school, depending on where your um, students are kind of at with their coding skills. Um, also there within the description or the speaker notes, um, you can find our full scope and sequence document. So it's kind of like a curriculum map to show you which courses we recommend you use with which grade levels and um, how they're used. And then last but not least, um, there's no prior coding experience needed to teach it. So um, our founders and CEOs, we they know that they built this because they know teachers don't always have the background um, in coding. We're classroom teachers and we might have special ed backgrounds and we might have literacy or math backgrounds, um, but at times it's mandated and we want to provide our students with that opportunity. Um, so you don't have to have background knowledge. And um, we have full resources, full lesson plans on our website to help you every step of the way um, so that you feel confident to teach that. So that's just a little bit about Code Monkey, who we are, what our subscription is, and like I said, kind of what sets us apart from some of the other providers out there. So let's get into the meat of our webinar today. Um, let's look at our 2023, I'm really excited to announce this Hour of Code course um, courses and also activity offerings. Um, you will see here, we have 12 courses or sometimes we call them activity offerings this year for you. Um, and then just released here, as you can see, is our new AI is a hoot pose detection that I'm going to actually guide and walk you through here in just a moment as well. Um, I'm really excited that there's 12 one hour courses that are free. Um, that includes our new one, but that's really two over 207 challenges and over 12 hours of content you could use technically next week with your students if you wanted to. So let's look at some people prefer to access our courses and our resources directly through the Hour of Code site. And if you want to do that, that's perfectly fine. Um, so how you can do that is you can go, and this is all linked. It'll be in the slides for you. You can go to the Hour of Code website. And then I do recommend if you are going to participate, go ahead and click here for educators and hosts that they can document and see that um, you are also participating to kind of get that track record. So you can click there to access all of the resources. Also, if you want to specifically find well, how can I filter and find just Code Monkey? Um, you can come here through activities and filter it. Um, and let me click and show you how to do that. So you can click here, go to the Our Code website, like we said. Um, you can come to activities. And once you're here on activities and you scroll down, um, they have our, ours through. If you come down to either, you can come through Code Monkey here. Or they also have us as the new one, 
Code Monkey Studio. So they did kind of separate us into two, but you can find most of our course offerings here through the Hour of Code website if you would rather come here. That is one way you can get to it. Now, in my opinion, where else can you find us? Go directly to our website. I truly feel like um, this is the easiest way and the most efficient because you're going to get additional courses if you come through our website, all 12 of them, all of our resources, the certificates, all the things will be for right through here. Also, you can send your students here as well um, to access these courses. So um, I do want to kind of also emphasize, yes, these are available and we are really showing them today, um, but also these are actually available all year long, either with your free teacher trial you can sign up for, a paid subscription, or just a guest from this marketing page. You can access this actually year round. So I did want to showcase that as well. So let's um, actually go into and let me show you. So you can come here to our codemonkey.com website and then slash hour of code. Um, and I'm going to click on it here for you. So here we are. If, if not, if you went to codemonkey.com under resources and then hour of code, this will also directly take you here. Um, and then it's important that you scroll down. So it's going to give you that video. Also, if you want the video directly from here, tells you a little bit about hour of code and how it works. But this is where you can get to all 12 of our courses and get started playing. Um, this is a great way to kind of look and just see, well, what, what is it for? Um, what's it called? Who is it for? Is it block-based or text-based or is it Python? Um, and then also gives you a little um, brief explanation. But where the meat is, is when you click on it. So let me click on Code Monkey Junior. You can come here and as you can see, you can start right here and you can start playing. You do not have to sign up and your students can click here or you can sign up for a free trial and if you want to be able to have access to the full lesson plans as well as track student progress and have the saving as well this week, next week. Um, but from here, you can, like I said, there's a million places to find information or start playing, but it will also tell you a little bit more about that particular course. So how many levels, what age we recommend, what concepts they'll be using, if it's block-based, text-based, and Python. Here's where you can find teacher notes. Um, so that's really helpful to help inform yourself as a teacher to be able to explore it ahead of time. And um, so you can click there and then it'll walk you through even deeper, more of an overview, specifications and how to get started, specific steps. Certificates can be found here. Um, frequently asked questions. If you have questions about this particular course, um, you can find that. And yet again, if at any time, um, you want your students to be able to save that. Um, you can sign up for a free teacher trial for 30 days. It does not require any type of information um, like a credit card or anything to get started. You just need your teacher email and you can log in by creating a password or using your single sign on you already have and you can get started. So I highly recommend you take advantage of that, especially if you want to use it for Hour of Code. Go ahead and sign up today or this week so you can start exploring your teacher dashboard and you can assign those courses so students can sign in next week and save their progress as they go. Okay, so let's get back to, here we go, our new offering, which is AI is a Hoot. So I would like to spend about 10, the last five to 10 minutes, and we'll also have time for Q&A if you have any questions at the end, um, looking at our new offering that we're allowing everyone access to. Um, as you can see, there's LiveNet there um, using the pose detection um, to program um, all over the owl. So let's take a look and talk about this new offering. So this course, uh, it's really neat because it allows students to use their webcam to train that AI model. And then you use those poses to get all over the owl between obstacles to get to the end of his route. Um, so you do have to have a webcam on the device to be able to be successful on this. Um, we do recommend you use it for ages 8 through 12, but with support or partnering them up, I think you could use it at a younger um, grade level. They, it is nine exercises, so it is kind of on the shorter end. I would say it took me a solid at least 30 minutes as an adult who was kind of comfortable with coding. Um, 
to get through it. So kind of gauge your time. Maybe as a teacher, practice it. You know your students better than anyone else so that you can kind of see how long that might take. Or if you're signing in, what would be great is you could use this all week long. This student progress would be saved. Um, it is using block coding. Um, so that's something that is that lower level that helps make students successful. Um, and then something to definitely note is I want you to know that um, all the images used to train the models are not stored and it's safe for student use. So it is COPA compliant. So um, please don't worry about that. We make sure that um, we are COPA compliant so that um, it is safe for all of our users, both teachers and for students. So let's go ahead and take a moment and look at the first three exercises. I'm going to go kind of fast, but I want you to feel comfortable so that you can get on and explore it in case you do want to use it with your students next week. So let me go ahead and this is a direct link to it, but like I said, you can find it right through our website and it's also available on that Hour of Code website as well. So let's come on in here um, to AI is a Hoops, as you can see. Um, like I mentioned, this course is block-based. Um, it's nine exercises total. Um, each exercise, um, it's great. This over here, I like to call this first section kind of the overview section with the instructions. Um, it's great because it shows students what exercise they're on. Um, there are great built-in accommodating features like you can listen if you'd like, um, but it gives students an overview of um, kind of setting up the stage of, well, you know, who is Oliver? What are you going to be doing? What's your task here in this course? Um, and then it has an example, videos, instructions, as well as it checks every single step of the way and can give them hints as well. And so it's very user friendly. Um, we developed this because we know AI, AI is our world and it's hands-on AI with pose detection. So students actually get to train the program and recognizes the poses to play the game at the end. So um, it's really neat. I think you'll really enjoy it as well as your students. Um, so let's take a second and get started. Um, so as you can see, here's the overview. Like I said, here's that listen button. I'll quickly click on it. It's going to be an exciting night. So that you can hear it, but you can also click stop if you don't want to use that anymore. And students can read. Um, and then I'm gonna skip down here to save us some time. So also a feature I love about our courses is when it gives you a, a command, it also color coordinates it down here. Um, within the second section, this is the code editor so that when they're the library of blocks, they're categorized by color so that they're easy for students and for teachers to find. Um, and it, then it also refers to that color over here in the instructions. So I think that's very helpful that you'll enjoy that. And then this third section is the game area. Um, where when we click run and it's time, it actually runs the game, as well as it's the host there for the, the tabs like the sprites, widget sounds, and the games. So let's get started. So my first instructions, as you can see, it's very user friendly. Like I said, I can play it, but I'm just going to quickly read it. So let's start with moving Oliver. It starts kind of very basic and moves students up and progresses them. So it's asking me to drag the step block, which is already here, from the movement library. So if I was not in the movement library, it tells me to come here and prompts me to click on this tab and then attach it to that on run block, which is already there um, within the code editor. And you heard that little click, I hope, um, and then I can check. Yay! So um, very rewarding. It lets students know, great, just very small steps. It makes them feel successful. I'm in confident as a learner. So now I can click on run and see what happens. And then it says click on stop. And hopefully you heard that. Um, sound again. And so it lets me know I've completed that. They're green and it's moving me on. So now Oliver barely moved. Um, we need to keep him moving though. So let's remove this step block and put it back. Um, drag a loop block from the control. So yet again, the control is color coordinated for me. So I need that loop block and I'm going to attach it to the on run. And then I can drag a step block from the movement library, still guiding me one step at a time attached it. Perfect. Now as a learner, I'm ready to check. There we go. Now click on run. Yay, I've moved him over here. Great job. So that is the first exercise and it'll tell them great job and prompt them to go to the next. So let's look at the second exercise here. So this is where we're going to get to do the pose detection, which I really wanted to get into to show you how it works. Um, so we're going to, have to create the AI model to be able to then use it later. Um, so 
let's go ahead and create it. So it says click add new model over here. I have to give it a name. I'm gonna call it Power Code Webinar Test real quick. Um, and like I said, you have to have a webcam for this. And so when I'm ready, I need to, and I, it is also case sensitive and um, spelling as well counts. So if name the first one, raise hands, it does need to be typed in exactly how you see it. So it, it gave me that check because I spelled it correctly and had lowercase as well. Um, and then now when I'm ready, um, this is where we need to use the webcam. So it says click on record. Okay. It might prompt students the first time I've used my webcam before here. Um, but as you all know, as educators, um, you might need to help support students um, with accepting using the webcam. So you may need to do that. So here I am. Um, so I've clicked there. Um, now I need to click on record and the timer icon. So I'm going to turn that on because it's helpful if you have to back away for the next one. And then when I click to record, it's going to take pictures. I need to raise my hands and move a little bit so that it gets versions of my pose. So I'm going to be ready. And that's why that timer is on just in case students need a second to prepare. I'm going to kind of move around and it, so you can see it's getting those samples, raising my hands so that the computer can detect that. So it got my samples. I'm good. and gave me a check. Now I'm going to name the second one here, stand. Same thing, but spelling and capitalization matters. And now I need to back up and stand. That's why that also that timer is helpful. Um, so I'm going to click on the timer icon. I did it. I'm going to click to record. I'm going to start backing up. I'm going to stand straight, it says, and try to move a little bit to make many versions of my pose. So I'm going to stand up. There we go. And then kind of move around a little bit. So it's detecting, as you can see, all of my samples until it stops. Okay, 178. That should be good. So going to move back up here. Lauren, you actually um, uh, recorded on the same class instead of the one on the stand. Oh, ah, thank you so much, Lynette. She's right. I did not come back down here. Thank you. So I can, it's a great teaching point, right? That happens. <laughs> I'm going to remove all these samples, raise my hands again so it doesn't get confused, right? Thank you, Lynette. And that would have happened to students. So I'm glad that was a perfect teachable moment. Thank you for unmuting. Okay. There we go. So now I have my 102 samples of my raising hand. Great. Now in stand, I need to record. Thank you so much. Now I'm going to back up again. And I'm going to try to stand up and get myself in the view. And I'm going to move around a little bit. There we go. And now I got the check. <laughs> there we go. So now I'm ready to train the model. So I have to click train. This might take a second. So I'm going to go ahead and click train as I talk. And so now it's taking those images. And like I said, those are, um, they're being into vectors. So it's not, it's COPA compliant, not saving for students, not traceable. As you can see, it's training it. I click train. Yay! And I can preview them if I want, but for time, I'm just going to say save. Yay! So now I'm ready. So it's a great job. I'm ready for exercise three, which is actually using this. And I know we're getting towards the end of the webinar. We have like two minutes. So I'm going to quickly show you how this works. Um, on exercise three and then take us back to our slides um, and then you can have fun exploring the rest of the exercises. So um, I have to choose the model. So this was the webinar, click check, add the webcam widget. So I'm gonna come over here, add, I'm gonna add my webcam widget here and it says drag it up here. So it's kind of out of the way of the game. Um, and then I need to click on my owl. So now I've got my Sprite owl. Now I'm coding the owl. I need to do my on prediction and change it to raise hands, it's already there. Go ahead and check, drag my jump block from the movement library. I'm gonna show you how it jumps and then there we go. Okay, let's click run. And now, there we go. I can use my hands, come on Oliver, get up there, woo! There we go. <laughs> so that's just kind of to let you see how that works. So there's exercise three. All right, let's go on back for time. So like I said, it gets more complex and it allows you to add a third pose later um, to use and play the game at the end, which is really fun for everybody. So I really hope you enjoy that. So last but not least, let's look at our final outcome of that guidance on preparing for Hour of Code. Um, you know your students 
the best um, you're with them every day. So decide on their level. Is this the first time they've ever seen coding? So do you need to start lower with a course like Code Monkey Junior or Beaver Achiever? Or is it to advance their skills? Are they ready for AI as a who? Are they ready for banana tails with Python? So you kind of decide. Always, always like all teachers over plan. I know they do. Plan ahead. So if you want to use the courses, um, with saving, you need to go ahead and sign up that 30-day free trial um, the next coming day so that you can decide how you want students to sign on to be or to log in um, to be able to save their progress. If not, that's fine too. Then you can go directly to our Hour of Code website or um, also through our Code Monkey site and students can play without saving. That's fine. Do you have enough devices? If not, do they need to share? Um, how will you pair them up? What other equipment might you need? Um, is it going to be loud? Do you want them to have headphones? Um, do they need a mouse if we're doing some text-based coding a, um, and a keyboard? Um, what about a webcam if you're using AI as a hoot? So just think ahead. Check the internet connection. I know you know that, but um, if you're using a particular space around the school, sometimes we see teachers bringing together students for a really fun big event in a library or in a cafeteria or a gym, but something they didn't quite think about ahead of time is what's Net like in there until you get in there and it doesn't work. And so go down there and give it a little trial run and see how that goes. And if not, um, reach out to your school or district administrator for technology to help get some support with that before next week. Um, make sure you access and review those free teacher resources of each course. They're there for you um, to help support you. And last but not least, if you need help, please visit our help center. And this link is here on the slides. Um, but it is an amazing resource. You can come here anytime for on-demand support. We have articles that are right here, but also you can search it anytime, like if you want student sign-in. You can also search for it and it's gonna give you all of our articles about how students can sign in to help you. Great tutorials, so check that out. And last but not least, celebrate your kids. Um, we all like to be celebrated, right? So come here and get these student certificates and recognize them, whether you send them home, put them in the hallway, take pictures of them, and if they do, take pictures with them. Uh, maybe post us and tag us on social media as well. So recognize those, those friends. So thank you all so much for joining us today, um, whether you are live right now or watching this recording. Um, we're excited to partner with you and provide this special opportunity to your students during the week of December 4th. Um, like I mentioned, please make sure that if you want to tag, um, hang with us or also tag us at CodeMonkeySTU on any of our social media sites. Um, visit our help center if you need support. Um, and then also, if you're interested in learning more and moving forward with a subscription, please reach out to Molly. Um, she'd love to help support you with that and her sales team. So um, let's see, we're out of time, but um, let's check out. Molly, do you mind telling me any questions maybe they had there in the chat that maybe we could answer quickly? Yes, there was a great question from Brian, which uh, he asked, what are common formats for offering the hour of code to students? School-wide designated time and day, what are some of the options you'd recommend that I pose to my administrators? <laughs> that is a million dollar question there, Brian. Um, I see it used in all different ways. I just, you know, formerly worked in a school district um, here this past year and I saw sometimes an individual teacher was just passionate about it and she offered that time for one hour just during that week um, on her own or his own. Um, I sometimes saw a library media specialist at the school kind of man that and have a whole school wide event and they pulled students, um, you know, during maybe a related arts time and they hosted it just one day that week when they saw them um, or I've seen a whole school celebrate and I've seen them um, you know, have like, a, like people do like drop everything and read, like drop everything in code. And for that hour, which I know can be risky with internet, um, for that hour, every teacher gets on and it's a whole school wide event, especially if you have enough devices, you could do something like that. Um, and then also at the district level, I've seen districts have really neat competitions and um, for like every, you know, student or teacher that participates, um, they do some sort of fun reward and they, you know, post it and make a big deal about it on their social media. So um, I've seen it used all different ways. And I think that they're all great. Just giving students the opportunity is, um, you know, the purpose of it. And so, um, Brian, please reach out to me individually if you want to at lauren.r at codemonkey.com if you want to know or if you want to partner and talk about that further. Um, but like I said, I've seen many options. I know we're 
getting close. It's about, you know, three or four instructional days away now at this point, we're at the end of the day on Tuesday, but I'd love to talk to you more about that as well. So, um, or if anyone in the chat, you know, wants to pop in how they're using it, that would be great as well. Thanks, Molly, for that question and Brian. Molly, are there any other burning questions people had or um, are we ready to wrap up? That was it. Thanks, okay. Lauren. Well, thank, every, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, like I said, um, please reach out to us um, if you have further questions or need support, um, but we're really excited and we appreciate you providing your students this coding opportunity next week. Bye everyone.